All right, so we're, we're going to start. So we'll get started here in another 30 seconds or so. I'll let you finish up all conversation. Great. So my name is Zachary Soucy. Uh, I'm one of the assistant professors at UC Davis uh, Medical Center. I've been integrating ultrasound into medical education up there in the School of Medicine for four years. Uh, and I'm really fortunate to be invited back and uh, give another lecture this year. Uh, it's a, a really fantastic forum and, you know, we are the change that we want to see. So this is, uh, is really fantastic. So uh, Chris contacted me a couple of months ago and he said, hey, Zach, we're going to, uh, we'd like you to come back. And I said, oh, what do you want me to talk about? And he goes, oh, well, I, I've got this title, UC Davis Ultrasound and Medical Education, Failure to Launch. Learning to fly, though, you know, you can, you can talk about how it was so hard for you to get everything going, and uh, there is no doubt that uh, it's been a long journey over four years and uh, multiple stages. Uh, so I feel as though I am very qualified to talk about a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, roadblocks, the barriers, uh, and I'm hoping that we can discuss uh, some of those uh, uh, solutions to those problems, those barriers, a little bit later on in the afternoon in the small groups. So I have no disclosures. Uh, and uh, objectives, we'll talk about failure to launch, and then we'll talk about uh, getting, getting on the road to, uh, to flying and learning uh, and being able to, uh, to uh, effectively implement at, uh, at an institution that has a lot of committees. So, uh, 2010, uh, I was uh, 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 chief resident, uh, interested in ultrasound, did a rotation with Joe Wood uh, in uh, Arizona. Uh, fantastic rotation. He said, I've got to, you have to meet this guy. He's really interested in a lot of the same things that you're interested in. Uh, and that guy uh, was, was Chris Fox. Uh, so uh, when I was out on the interview trail, interviewed at UC Irvine, I mean, incredible ultrasound everywhere. Uh, got to teach a couple of classes with the, uh, with the medical students. And I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Uh, but Chris had an empire. He had everything. I said, ah, you know, uh, I, I think I want, I, I want a challenge. So uh, I went to UC Davis and uh, did my fellowship there. Uh, and started integrating some ultrasound, started with, uh, uh, you know, a couple of ideas, but I uh, asked Chris, and he said, you know, I said, how, how can I get this off the ground? What, what can I do first? And he said, well, uh, you know, talk with everybody, but you're probably going to want to start with a student interest group. So went out to some of the friends, Boehner, uh, uh, Dr., Dr. Bonner uh, w was one of uh, my uh, colleagues at the time, uh, asked him and he said, you know, that's a great idea. Why don't you start with ultrasound, student interest group, uh, get things going, really talk to the resident or talk to the medical students, get them interested, to try to build something from the ground up. Two weeks later, the deans come to me and they say, hey, you know, you, you've got this really innovative idea. Uh, we've got a lot of, we've got an LCME visit coming. Uh, you know, I think that this uh, could really fit but we want you to run it by our curriculum review committee. So this is where, two weeks, I'm already talking to the deans, uh, but now the curriculum review committee. So I go, I uh, have a small proposal, uh, about 15, 20 minutes, I bring an ultrasound in, and the curriculum review committee says, this sounds really fantastic, uh, you know, uh, but you need a proposal. You need something that's more formal. So, you know, who's going to be teaching this? Uh, what, what's the evidence? What other institutions are doing this? Uh, where are you going to get ultrasound machines, et cetera? So I uh, went back to, to actually Chris and uh, the couple of other friends that I had at the time, uh, and uh, they said, well, you know, here are some of the things that we're doing. Uh, integrate them. Uh, George Washington had a very nice proposal at the time, uh, and one of my friends was at that program. He said, here, try, try a couple of these things, put this together, uh, and give it to him. So uh, I did. I, I, I sent that back to the, to the curriculum review committee. Uh, and then they said, oh, well, you have to talk with the block council because the block council, we, we review the, the curriculum, but it's the block council that really talks to the instructors of record. And I'm like, oh, what, what are these? I was new at UC Davis. Who are these instructors of record? Uh, and, and anyway, I go to the block council and uh, present everything there. Uh, and they, they say, you've got to implement this at the, at the uh, uh, 
uh, the, the course level, which is going to be this instructor of record. So I go to the instructors of record and they said, this sounds like a great idea, <laughs> but we want you to talk with the deans again and get this formally approved by them. And they said, that's great. Talk to your chair because you're going to need some funding for this. And my chair said, you know, the vice chancellor of the institution really controls all funding. Uh, and then the vice chancellor, who is very, very difficult to get a, uh, uh, an appointment with, uh, said, hey, why don't you look into grants? And so I looked into grants and found that UC Irvine actually has most of the grants <laughs> in California for this. And uh, so I, I figured I would just, you know, tap into uh, the deity himself, Poseidon, and, uh, you know, get some divine intervention. But unfortunately, he was uh, busy in a committee meeting. So uh, I was unable to talk with him. Uh, so is this everybody's experience? That's a, about a year into this. I said, is everybody having the same status comiticus that I'm having? Uh, where we're just, we're, we're going round and round in circles. Uh, very supportive. Nobody's saying that I can't do it, but there's really no avenue for it within the curriculum. Uh, so that's not true. Not everybody has a, a system that operates like this. Uh, this is V. Din. He's uh, lecturing a little bit later on this afternoon. He may be actually in the room. Uh, and he did the same thing. He got the same advice. He went. He started a student interest group. Uh, the deans approached him relatively quickly. He said to the deans, I need some time, which is money, and I need uh, ultrasound machines. Uh, and they said, well, what we'll do is we'll talk with the faculty, uh, we'll get you integrating, and he got a bunch of ultrasound machines and uh, got time to integrate within the curriculum. Uh, and uh, we started at about the same time, and he reached a, a really great endpoint uh, about three or four months in, and he said, maybe, maybe you're doing something wrong. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think I was. I, I think that I was recognizing that uh, the medical schools are like little governments. Uh, they're mini governments, and everybody has a different system for their government. Uh, and this is a take-home point for this lecture. You need to know the system that you're in. Uh, at UC Davis, which is very different than UC Irvine, uh, both in the UC system, we have committees for everything. It's sort of like the United States here, where you know you have the Senate, you have the Congress, you have special counsels. It goes back and forth. Nothing gets done, and then you know three presidents later, somebody does something about it. Uh, there are other institutions that are much like the Kremlin, where you know somebody's there's there's these other committees, but we know who really runs the game, right? Uh, and then and then there's the flat out dictators, where the dean says, hey, we're we're going to change this, we're going to make this change, and everybody's going to follow suit. So you have to really know the system that you're working in before you can really make uh, effective change. There's no one way to do this, uh, you know, just like loading the dishwasher, which. I'm a little type A personality, so you know, I, with my wife, I'm like, really, the plates could be here, and uh, she has a totally different way of loading the dishwasher. They always, the dishes always get clean, sorta, uh, and uh, you know, you're gonna have to work with your institution uh, to figure out the best way to clean your dishes and implement this ultrasound in medical education. So, now, sorta, learning to fly. Uh, there are some common themes, though, that after talking with multiple uh, institutions uh, that you really, really need. Uh, and one is you need an advocate. You need a point person. And that point person has to be a really strong voice, uh, very willing to compromise, very willing to um, uh, meet with multiple departments, put in a lot of time. But that is the absolute uh, building block uh, uh, foundation for a good program. Uh, after you have that advocate, you need to have a strategy. You need to know your institution and go in knowing exactly what they're going to want. Uh, so that way, at every turn, when they say, well, you got to go to this committee or we need a proposal, uh, you have something there. And you say, actually, you know, I've already, I've already done this. Look, uh, we've done the research. Uh, and then the preparation, teamwork, uh, and the resources. Uh, that first year was spent really making my own resources. Uh, and we have better methods now uh, through AIUM. Uh, there's a web portal that I'll talk a little bit about. So first step, 
you've got to find the one, the one, the, the, the Neo and the Matrix, that person that's going to solidify the program, be the point of contact, uh, really organized, working with other departments, they have to have a really good attitude. Um, you know, there are different types of pit bulls. Uh, there are baby pit bulls, and then there are real, you know, uh, go get them pit bulls. Uh, and you've got to be the baby pit bull with, when working with all these other services, uh, the dean's office. Uh, if you go in and you're strong-headed and, and, you know, that really strong advocate right from the get-go, uh, you may turn some people off. So a strategy. And uh, the... There will be a publication coming out in JUM uh, in about eight months. Uh, it was authored by Alan Chem, who's one of the uh, one of the speakers today. Uh, there are really two strategies. There's the bottom up approach and the top down. Uh, and I would really advocate for the bottom up, but really it's going to be a combination. Uh, from the bottom up, it's grassroots. You're working with the medical students, creating a student interest group, uh, pilot projects within the medical student curriculum. Anatomy is a great place to start. Even one session uh, will really open the minds of the uh, the uh, instructors uh, as well as the medical students. I had this, uh, so I went to anatomy and I said uh, to one of our uh, anatomy professors, Dr. Gross, actually a gross anatomy and uh, I said dr. gross you know I really want to implement some ultrasound I think it would be great in the physical exam portion and they would draw on each other and you could just do the ultrasound watch see if the if the liver's really there and he said you know that's a great idea and I've heard this before uh, and uh, he said but maybe next year um, a week and a half later he got a call from the US government uh, because he's part of uh, um, uh, disaster relief and they actually said so you're coming out to Washington to attend a one-week ultrasound course uh, and he came back to me he goes yeah so maybe maybe this is something for real uh, so we implemented uh, four years ago with a couple of sessions and it really took off uh, and like all great things in life you know uh, the twisty cone you want to start with a little bit of uh, work with the medical students uh, and then plant the seed for the for the deans uh, the the top-down approach if you're exclusively top-down you have to have a really heavy hand sitting uh, in the dean's office that's really able to make that change uh, and um, um, and is willing to uh, to break with tradition which some of our senior more wise uh, deans may not it's not always a popular idea as far as preparation, uh, you're going to need a proposal. Uh, this, at least at my institution, I thought it was a good idea uh, to put down in words what uh, everything that's going on. And my proposal four years ago is distinctly different than the proposal that you'd make today because there are so many more schools integrating ultrasound in medical education. Uh, there are more, more studies to cite, uh, more uh, studies on how it improves physical exam, et cetera. Uh, so having this, uh, being able to, to state a little bit of background, uh, talk about the curriculum in use, uh, and then some of the nuts and bolts also. Um, I think it's the, uh, the next slide. So one of my mentors uh, in residency said, come to me with answers, not questions. Uh, and it's a little bit harsh, uh, but I had this research project and it was taking a long time for me to, to come up with, uh, with some resources and really focus everything down. Uh, and, uh, and, and Annie said, you know, you've got to go out there, you've got to do the research and then come back to me with answers. They may not be the right answers, but their answers, and then we can develop questions from uh, where to go from there. And, and that, that has served me really, really well. Uh, so for your uh, uh, proposal, uh, think about learning theory. Think about uh, flipping the classroom. There were great presentations uh, on how to uh, integrate the uh, uh, ultrasound over, over uh, the, the webcast, uh, how to uh, use iPads. Those are things that, that schools are really going to start to listen to. Um, and uh, the, the theory, I'm one of the uh, career advisors in the medical school at, at UC Davis. And the students have told me increasingly over the past four years, they're like, Dr. Susie, I'm just, just not going to lecture today. And I said, why, why? And they're like, 
because I just play on the internet. It's, it's not how I learn. Uh, and this is a really fantastic way to bring that up and say, hey, you know, the 20 people that are showing up out of the class of 120, uh, that, that is the way that they learn, but there's 100 students that aren't learning very well uh, for your uh, elective lectures. Uh, let's, let's engage them. Let's do some active learning. Uh, and then in the proposal, talking a little bit about the technical details, you're going to have to uh, let them know that this is, uh, is feasible. Uh, where are the machines going to come from? What space do you have? Uh, who's got the money bags? Uh, and which professors are proficient in point-of-care ultrasound uh, that are going to be uh, uh, helping teach? Because this is not a one-person job. As far as resources, you can get very overwhelmed. And this is where I, I can deal with the committees and more and more presentations, but I really got overwhelmed because I didn't know where to start. I didn't have any resources. Uh, and in 2012, there, aren't, well, there weren't a lot of resources. Uh, and I felt as though I was reinventing the wheel that you know, Dr. Fox and uh, Dr. Hopman had already been uh, uh, inventing. And then AIUM came up with a really fantastic idea. Let's create a toolbox. Let's get everybody's curriculum, bring everybody together, uh, and uh, create this common resource. So that way, not every, everybody can focus on convincing the deans, working, creating a student interest group instead of creating their next new lecture or figuring out why they have to present this to the LCME committee and why active learning is a really part and important part of uh, medical student education. Uh, so here there are some, uh, I don't know if any of you have been to the AIUM web portal, but there are uh, videos, uh, student testimonies. Uh, there's a really fantastic toolbox that has videos, it has all the things that you really f will need to, to put together a, a, a coherent curriculum. Lots of contacts. Uh, so this is sort of up near the California. You've got lots and lots of emails, uh, professionals in the area that, uh, that are able to help answer your questions. And then the mentors program, which is sort of close to my heart. I've been working for about two and a half, three years uh, to compile a list of all the ultrasound experts around the country. Uh, uh, and my hope is uh, that we'll have an inter interactive map. And as an AIUM member, you're going to be able to log on. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there. Uh, and, and see all of the different regions, uh, different uh, medical schools in the area, uh, some AIUM members that have a lot of uh, expertise that can help teach within the curriculum. I can't overstate how important it is uh, to build a strong team and, and a really great foundation. Uh, this is where I think I faulted probably the most, is I, I felt as though I could do it all by myself. Uh, and that's just not the case. As this curriculum gr grows, there are going to be integration into urology, integration into a lot of the basic sciences, and you will be at the med center 24 hours a day uh, with these little projects uh, if you do not build a, a strong team. Uh, I early on did talk to John Rose, who's one of the grandfathers of uh, point of care ultrasound, and he's at UC Davis, uh, and he pointed me in the direction of some key folks, uh, the chair of radiology, uh, several of the radiologists, uh, the chair of the uh, curriculum <laughs> review committee, uh, and uh, it, it's really important to know who's who. Uh, when you're when you're starting to integrate and build that team along with the proposal uh, and even put them in the proposal get their permission to put them in there uh, and then when you talk with the deans you can say there's a full complement of physicians that are are willing to uh, to help teach and if all of that is just, it's too much, just start with an ultrasound student interest group. Uh, you, this is what's fun. I, I love teaching medical students. That's why I got into this. Uh, you know, ultrasound is an extremely useful application uh, of technology. Uh, and uh, getting them all together uh, builds good camaraderie, and uh, the students can actually can often be one of the best advocates for the uh, for the uh, curriculum when the the deans do come to you to uh, to present. Really exciting! Over the past 
eight months, we've created a national ultrasound student interest group through AIUM, uh, and uh, this is the homepage of the uh, test uh, website that we're, we're building, uh, and it's going to have a lot of uh, uh, modules, uh, introduction modules to uh, anatomy. Uh, as well, it's going to be a really great way for these uh, students to network uh, and, uh, and start building relationships. We have, uh, I think it's 16 students from 10 or 11 medical schools, and it is spreading like fire. We don't have to feed this fire. That We actually have to pull them back because they are going everywhere, getting everybody involved. Uh, and I really feel as though this is, this is the next step and this is really what's gonna bring about a whole host of changes uh, because when the students demand it, the, uh, the deans, in my uh, experience, the deans have listened uh, even when I was in other committees. Uh, so this is gonna be a really fantastic resource for your medical students. Uh, and it's going to be a fantastic resource for you as well. It's got all about the goals and objectives uh, and then a lot of um, its own toolbox to help these students get everything up and going by themselves. So as a sort of recap and a summary, uh, find that champion. It's got to be somebody strong. It's got to be somebody diplomatic, maybe a little bit of free time on their hands. Uh, working with AIUM and uh, SUSME is going to be critical if we can bring all of these resources, all of these great minds together, share curriculum, uh, it's going to go a long way for everybody. We build together. Um, build from the bottom up, but also from the top down, sprinkle some, spring, plant the seed for, uh, for the deans and really that National Ultrasound Student Interest Group uh, is going to really help help with the growth and, uh, and get things started, even if you may not have curriculum. When you develop your proposal, uh, think of all of the factors that go into a proposal uh, and successful implementation. We've gone over a bunch of them here today. Use resources wisely. Don't be redundant. Don't uh, recreate the wheel. Expect the best. Prepare for the worst and capitalize on what comes. And everything uh, at UC Davis, it started as one ultrasound introduction to, to uh, anatomy, uh, surface anatomy. Uh, and it's grown into a four-year curriculum, which is uh, really fantastic. And you're going to expect things are going to go really fast. You're going to be that rabbit. But just realize that in the system, you're, you're sort of stuck on that turtle. <laughs> and uh, the systems change slowly, so be patient. And that's been uh, a real challenge of mine is, is slowing everything down and, uh, and really uh, uh, allowing things to change uh, over time. And the end goal is, you know, our medical students uh, improving patient care, learning more effectively, increasing their board scores, uh, and just being better doctors. Uh, and I think that, you know, as long as you keep that close to your heart and uh, that's the, uh, the premise for, your, for your, your reason for getting into uh, ultrasound and medical education, uh, it'll carry you your whole career. All right, that's all the time I have. I have about five minutes for questions. Any questions? I do have a bonus slide, which this is disruptive, you know, innovation in itself, right? So this is our curriculum at UC Davis. We have an anatomy, uh, transition to clerkship, the MSK unit in second year, uh, surgery, OB-GYN rotations in the third year, and then we have a fourth year elective. Uh, the ultrasound student interest group has been super active. We have, I think, 50 or 60 members, uh, about 110 students per class. Uh, and we, we run four workshops a year. We have office hours. Uh, so we have our Center for Virtual Care. We have seven ultrasound machines. And st we have one of our fellows there for an hour once a month. And the students come in and they just ultrasound whatever they want. Uh, and then this has a stem just uh, as it did at UC Irvine. Uh, we've got two research projects. Uh, one of them is finishing up right now in Nicaragua, uh, and students have taken an ultrasound down there. They're doing a needs assessment and uh, a little bit of uh, ultrasound training as well. So uh, you, you, you'll be really surprised at how quickly this catches fire uh, and, and stretches your time, but uh, becomes just really rewarding, and the students are so passionate about it. Uh, and I will say, you know, a couple of other things, you know, uh, it is, it is uh, sort of that, um, uh, uh, 
uh, gateway technology. You know, uh, as we bring more technology in, uh, those that are a little bit more forward thinking uh, start to recognize that simulation is a really fantastic way to, uh, you know, uh, test uh, on physical exam skills or appropriateness uh, with, uh, with patients that are maybe a little bit disruptive or difficult. Uh, as well, telemedicine is on the horizon. There are so many technologies that are coming down, home-based health, health care, uh, that this will grow. And I've been assured at UC Davis that over the next two to three years, our curriculum is changing, just like most curriculums uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, they're going to have a technology thread throughout all four years. And there will be an instructor of record responsible for all of the ultrasound and uh, um, different scopes that are coming in. There's uh, one that uh, fits on your iPhone. Uh, and you can look in the ear. And one of our residents did a uh, presentation, a research project uh, looking at patient satisfaction and you you can convince the pa the parents you know you can't get them looking in the ear and know what they're looking at but you can take a picture of that TM and say this is why we're giving antibiotics this is why we're not giving antibiotics so it's not just ultrasound it's it's a, a whole host of technologies uh, and LCME if you have an LCME visit coming up that can be uh, leveraged, and I would I would definitely advocate uh, you know ta uh, figuring out what active learning you have going on in the curriculum because that's going to be really important. That's one of the things that the LCME really looks at, uh, and UC Irvine has done a really fantastic job, uh, really incorporating a ton of active learning, uh, and they've seen benefits from it. So that's that's all I have. Yeah, question. So uh, our anatomy course, uh, they, they dissect for three hours. Uh, and I talked with, a, spoke with Richard Tucker, and he was willing to give up one of those three hours because it can be monotonous, we all know. And it's a semester-long uh, uh, course, so it, it extends many months. Uh, but he uh, allowed one hour, so students uh, rotate out. So they're in groups of, they're you know given a number, one through three, uh, and then one hour, group one rotates out. They come back, the second group rotates out. Uh, and then we uh, coordinate, so that way if they're looking at the heart and in dissection, we look at the heart and ultrasound, and we'll talk about auscultation. We have a, a, a pamphlet, uh, uh, goals and ob objectives, uh, and a little bit about the physiology that they look at the night before. Uh, so that way, it's linking the physiology. They they tangibly hold the anatomy, uh, and then they look at it probably the way that they're going to look at it in their clinical practice through ultrasound, uh, and it really ties together a lot of aspects of the uh, the curriculum. So. Yes, sir. How many students do you have in your class? Uh, it, it varies, I think, 110 to 115. Okay. I, the reason I ask is I've got 240 students in my class. Yeah. And I don't have a whole lot of office around here. But yeah. What do you do I mean, when they come in and out? Like, how do they in that class? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that is something, even with seven ultrasound machines, we have you know four students, so it's, it's fairly optimal. Uh, but uh, one of the lectures, uh, we divide into two, and that really raises the number of learners per ultrasound machine. Uh, so that's, that's difficult. Uh, either you have small groups and maintain the small groups, uh, and you have the students come in one after another after another, and it, it makes for a very long day. Uh, or you increase the number of uh, uh, learners per ultrasound machine to keep it in some somewhat manageable uh, time constraints, uh, or get more ultrasound machines, which <laughs> and and uh, educators as well. Uh, you know, we sometimes have a couple of uh, we have one uh, point of care ultrasound expert per two beds, uh, so they go back and forth, uh, and the students have even commented that they wish that there were one per bed, and that's that's. Those are high demands. That's that's pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can be difficult, for sure. Yes, sir. 
I'm just curious about dollars. You're trying to, you put, we're kind of at that stage where everybody's doing a lot of, this sounds great. Also, mm -hmm. we did a pilot project last year where we kind of, you know, sold ourselves to the reps and we did yep. the equipment four times a year and we were to execute about maybe six hours of learning for mm -hmm. second years. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a good experience and then we came back and said, this is great, like you said. So yeah. we're, um, we're not even in, I wouldn't even say we're in a negotiating money. We're, we're in the state where they say we don't have any money yet. Yeah. Everybody knows that some of still have money in fact. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering where did you get the money to buy machines and are you paid, are any of the instructors being paid for or somehow compensated either by protective hours or something like yeah. that? Uh, I am, I have some compensation as the Director of Technology Enabled Active Learning, uh, but it is not a lot, uh, and it does not protect many hours. Uh, so a lot of it is still uh, getting the title and getting some compensation is step one. Uh, and uh, that, <clears throat> that can be difficult, but once you get that foot in the door, uh, the, I've talked with the medical school and, you know, two to three years, they're blowing up the, the curriculum, so they're going to be integrating this technology thread, and then there will be more uh, FTE, some, some money for, uh, for that, the person that's in that position. Um, what about the finance? So how many machines have you ended up buying? Yeah. So we had two machines in our Center for Virtual Care, and for some reason, I don't know, this was all during my fiasco with you know, multiple committees, there was a lot of money that came up. Uh, in our Center for Healthcare Technology, and they said, we have to spend this, and they said, do you have a good way to spend this? <laughs> said, yes, I've, I've got a very good way, uh, and we were doing, we linked it with a uh, uh, faculty ultrasound training course. Right. So uh, then the hospital started kicking in money because we were using those ultrasound machines not just to train the medical students, but to also train the, uh, the faculty, yeah. Yep. That's, I think that's a good strategy and getting the hospital to, to uh, allocate funds.